What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 14 in the Math 1 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question is asking us to find the value of x in the system of equations shown right here. Now the particular strategy that we will use to solve this system is called substitution. This may sound familiar um, from class, but I will very quickly go over the process and actually do it with these two equations that were given. So I actually wrote out the steps for solving a system of equations by substitution, and I will go ahead and actually figure all of this out right next to it. Uh, step one is to first get x or y by itself in one of the two equations that you're given. Now in this problem, it actually did that first step for us. It said that y equals 1 minus x. So we have y by itself, and that makes us happy. We're fine with that. So step two, we're actually going to take that expression that we got in step one, and plug it back into the other equation. Now what does that mean? Basically, if I see that y equals 1 minus x, then I'm going to take this whole expression that I know equals y and actually plug it in to where I see y in the other equation. So I would actually end up rewriting this the top equation there, not as 5x plus 4y, but as 5x plus 4 and then that is all going to be times 1 minus x, which still equals 1. Now notice how I have not changed the way this equation looks at all, except that instead of y, I just wrote 1 minus x. And that is the, that's the basic idea of substitution. If we know that our letter equals something, even if that's an expression that uses another letter, we can plug that expression in in order to have an easier time figuring out one of our letters and get closer to solving this system. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up step two. Uh, first way that I'll do that will be by using the distributive property. So I hop over here, 4 times 1. Hop over here, 4 times negative x. So this gets me now from 5x plus all this junk to 5x plus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative x is negative 4x equals 1. And at this point, I can see that I have some like terms. 5x's minus 4x's is actually just going to give me x plus 4 equals 1. And at this point, I have a variable I'm trying to get by itself. It's being added to 4. I subtract 4 from both sides. Plus 4 and minus 4 cancel. And 1 minus 4 will finally get me to x equals negative 3. Now I am going to do step 3 just for the sake of finishing the problem, even though this is my answer. But just for the sake of showing exactly how a complete, a complete problem like this works, I'll do step 3, which is to take my number solution from step 2, so x equals negative 3, and plug it back into the easier of the two equations I'm given. And I'm going to say that that's this, y equals 1 minus x. So now instead of y equals 1 minus x, I'm going to write this as 1 minus negative 3. And now all I'm trying to do is solve for the other variable, solve for y. And at this point, I've narrowed it down to just the arithmetic expression 1 minus negative 3. And if I recall, I can take these two negative signs and put them on top of each other to make a plus sign, because two negatives do make a positive, which gives me y equals 1 plus 3, or 4. Now once again, we didn't need to find y, we just needed to find x. We found out that it was negative 3, but for the sake of completing the problem, if you had to find both your x and your y, that would be how you would finish up a problem like that. So now, I just need to pull in the gridded response page and actually fill that in. So my answer was x equals negative 3. And now when I write this in my gridded response page, I'm going to have to give my negative sign and my 3 each their own boxes. Underneath my negative sign, I find the corresponding bubble and bubble that. Under 3, I find that corresponding bubble and fill it in. And that is how I solve and write the answer to a question like this.